Those are part of his being to die. That he preserved life in. That he controlled his action that he never sinned. Died in the stead of all mankind dying. The Spirit Son gave up life from it. Therefore, ending the law. Because all mankind was dead. Everybody lived on earth at that time before God the Father, when Christ died, God the Father was still going to be dead. Do you have any idea why you're baptized? Yeah, a preacher take you out through the water to baptize you and don't even know this. Don't know what they do. Everybody on the earth was considered dead. Was there anybody alive you think that Christ didn't die in the place of that you can say you still under the Ten Commandments? After death, after the Messiah's death, God the Father gave a woman soldier to pierce his side. The lamb was dead. God the Father gave a lamb to pierce his side. And Abraham seed, the spirit left the body and went down into paradise. God the Father gave a spear of man of Roman soldier to pierce his side, and out of his side came forth blood and water. The blood of a New Testament. It's recorded in Hebrews 10 and 9. He taken away the first. He had to do this first. Because man was required to die. So he had to take away the first. Before he could ever give the New Testament. Before he could ever give his blood. He had to die. For his will and testament. Death was first required. You see Christ had to go through suffering. Being beaten. Because it required that Israel was to be chastised with the stripes of men for that shortcoming of the law. So it's wounded for Israel's transgression of the law. You never heard it before in your life, have you? So you will never heard the truth. Whipped for Israel's sins of the law. You ain't never heard it, but you're trying to make you a prophet out of two sins of each other. Oh, you so conceited. You so conceited, you stitch. Bruised for their iniquities. The chest tied of Israel's sins under the law was laid up on him with beans. Oh, but you don't want the gospel to lose. The ancient tradition. So death shall flow in this world. He had to go through being beaten, whipped, nailed to a tree, give up his life. And go to hell for three nights and three days before he could ever give the New Testament. Before the blood of his test that he gave the flow from his side after death could even come in the fruits. He had to go through sufferings of being beat, nailed to a tree, and go to die and go to hell for three nights and three days before he could even give the New Testament. That's the way you give the new test. You, you don't even realize what Christ meant before you give this test. You don't even know the price of taking away the first. You deny it. Some of you go around talking, you still the law. Calling Christ the death of failure. You don't even know what you're talking about. Because you're ignorant of the gospel. You don't know the power of his death. Talk about the power of Christ's problem. You and your preacher said it. You don't even know what they're talking about. He had to go through suffering. And the cross and death and hell. When the Spirit Son of God created hell, He created hell where He could torment Him after He left the body. There was in a tomb on the top of the ground. And was placed in a tomb on the top of the ground. His Spirit went into hell. At sundown, after Christ had died, at sundown, before Solomon died, He went down to paradise, went down to Abraham's book. He was there with one of the thieves that died before sundown. But after sundown, he crossed over into hell. The great gust separates the place of Abraham, bosom of paradise, and a great gust separates. And on the other side is a place of torment. As sundown, the Messiah crossed over. The beginning of three nights and three days, he crossed over. 
And he was there. His spirit, the spirit, son of God, that created the universe, the word of God. Then when you can't deal with these things. The word of God made hell where it could torment him. So you thank him for gain. Maybe you can relate some to saying he suffered on the cross, but you can't realize that the spirit, son of God. Did you not know that your ancestor spirit was to go to hell? After death is the judgment. You think you know what baptism represents. You think you know what it stands for. When Christ got from the grave, he says, all power is given to me. All man can for us. He was concerned, but for us, the Father was concerned. His dead, been burnt in hell. They belong to me now. Totally body and spirit. All mankind, both the living and the dead, have I redeemed. Every man's spirit is mine because my spirit, the supreme spirit, son of God, suffered there in hell for three nights and three days. You need to learn the gospel. The third day, the father raised him. He raised that body, Abraham's seed, in Mary's flesh and blood, an immortal body. This body was born from the dead, a spirit body. Or you got to be born of the spirit. Not only be born inside, you're going to see the kingdom of heaven with your eye. It's one thing to be born into it, to be born of the Holy Ghost. You become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And your preachers don't understand it either. But in order to see it, with your eyes to see it, you got to be, your body got to be born again. You got to be born of the spirit. Like as Christ's body, Abraham's seed that he took on. Mary's flesh and blood that the body was made of. It was born of the, born from the dead of the spirit, a spirit body. So you need to understand the gospel. What do you think the great thing is? And you think it just God came down and you turned into a spirit, a spirit turned into flesh and then turned back into a spirit. Don't you know? Satan is a deceiver. What can you perceive the power unto me? What is the role model of Christ walking this earth as a man in our flesh and blood? Hebrews 2 and 14 says, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. But if you deny that, then what benefit can you see? If you say he was just God and turned into flesh and then turned back into spirit, don't you know you lying and you blinding people to perceiving the Son of God took on man nature and the power to say therein unto men and women? Don't you realize? You question why the Bible continually proclaims that Christ is coming to flesh and those that deny Christ coming to flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. Don't you know you're doing the same thing that the unbelieving Jews did and persecuted the believing Jews in that day? This was the problem with Stephen. When Stephen was proclaimed that he had made a new covenant. You don't know what he was talking about. In his death, he took away the first. Then he gave a new testament. And the covenant of that testament is the Holy Ghost. Whereas the covenant of the Old Testament was the Ten Commandments written in law. God said in Jeremiah, pray word. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers when I led them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continue not in my covenant, I regard them not. But this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward part. And in their hearts will I write them. I shall be unto them an Elohim, a God, and they shall be unto me a people, even a holy people to talk about. Make a new charge, but the, the law that he gave, it will be in a different form. The law in the form of his spirit, his own nature. That's the law to nature. The law in the form of his spirit, you must be born into the kingdom of God. You see, Stephen was talking about something beyond what they were willing to believe because they weren't willing to believe that Jesus was the Messiah, a man. There was also the promised Messiah to come. And every time you deny that he's the seed of Abraham, uh, was made of Mary, you sing the same thing through the devil's spirit. And you don't even know it. 
and the price that he paid and taken away the first. You may say, Jesus died for my tens on the new tens in your ignorance. You're denying the power of Christ's death. You're denying the power of Christ's fall in your ignorance. And you're standing on the side of the spirit of Antichrist and you don't even know it. You never know the power of the gospel. You never know it. Unless you come and wake up to receive the truth. There is a man that's coming, the man of sin. Oh, and he's going to be a man too. And those who refuse to receive the truth of the gospel, God gives to that spirit. But it's required that you hear now. That you learn, even though I know I proclaim the gospel that hadn't been proclaimed for over a thousand years, but it's time that you hear it now. Not your father's ignorance will you be justified by it because it is now God's will that you hear greater knowledge. Not the European lack of knowledge of your European ancestors, but it's God's will that you hear now greater knowledge. Not your grandparents, well you black or white, whatever ancestors interpretation of the Bible so that lack of knowledge will you be judged by, but it's required that you hear greater now. And you will be judged according to you see, Stephen was proclaiming something that the unbelieving Jews didn't want to accept. Same thing that you say today in your ignorance. In the ignorance of your forefathers and your four interpretators of the God, your theologians. You better learn something. You better hear. I wasn't sent to beg about and I ain't doing it. Full warning. For telling you the judgment is near. Wisdom shall be the stability of the time. And you need to hear wisdom. You need to hear whom God has sent. I'm proclaiming what God has sent me to proclaim. The unbelieving Jew did not perceive Jesus as the Messiah. They were looking for a different type of Jewish man. So they rejected Christ. The believing Jews proclaimed him, and they were persecuted. The Gentiles who came to believe and receive the gospel, they were persecuted by the unbelieving Jews and the unbelieving Gentiles. That Christ has come in the flesh. He had taken away the first and given a new covenant. Be it so that all Israel did not come to believe then, God had also foretold in the prophets in Jeremiah, he said, a remnant will I give to believe. Until the appointed time, then will I gather my people of Israel out of all nations and bring them back. And the covenant shall be made with the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah in that day. But now, there's a remnant to believe. And remnants of the Gentile nations to believe. The Son of God has come in the flesh. For in John 4, John wrote and said, Every spirit that confesses not that Christ has come in the flesh, even taking on him the seed of Abraham, it is the spirit of Antichrist. You deny that Christ was actually Abraham's seed, you're saying the same thing. That the unbelieving Jews were saying in that day and persecuting the believing Jews and the believing Gentiles, you were saying the same thing that the unbelieving Jews and the unbelieving Gentiles stood against. You standing with that same spirit, you're deceived by that same spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. But there is a man coming yet that that spirit of Antichrist shall rule in. I want to read to you from the book of Revelation. <laughs> 